Should I buy my next investment on my own name or under an SPV? SPV being Special Purpose Vehicle, which is a limited company set up with the sole purpose of owning a property. There are, of course, advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, the first thing you need to do before you do anything is to get professional advice from a good accountant because mistakes or incorrect choices early on can be very, very expensive to rectify later. For example, if you buy properties under your own name and you then decide you want to incorporate them, that can be not only expensive, you can incur capital gains tax and have to pay stamp duty. So you need to plan in advance what you're going to do. If you do decide that you want to go down the SPV route, of course, you can register a company yourselves. You can go to Company Wizard, choose your name, register it, pay your fee, which is not much. And more or less the next working day, the company's live. Two, three days later, you can have a bank account set up and you're ready to go. There are people out there who specialize in setting up SPVs and there are advantages to that because the people who specialize in it will not only set up the company for you, but they will provide a registered office and most importantly, they will file the correct paperwork on time. And with a limited company, that is very, very important. If you forget to file a document before the but by the required date, they don't give you very long and then they can simply strike the company off and you could lose everything. You have to be very, very careful. So it can be well worth it. Um, there's uh, one company I know that does this. I think they charge 149 pounds plus VAT to set it all up for you. But they, they, set, they do quite a lot of work for you. And then they charge you 19 pounds per month plus VAT. That I believe includes your registered office and filing of all your paperwork so you don't have to worry about a thing. It's definitely worthwhile. If you register the company yourself, make sure that you choose the correct SRC codes. That is standard industry classification. And for buy to let, that is 68209. And for the buying of selling and selling of property, that's 68100. You can register up to or add up to four SIC codes to a company. So that's quite important because if you don't put the correct SIC code, then you won't be able to get finance to buy property. It's not fatal because you can amend it and update it later. So it's not the end of the world, but it's much better if you do it in the first place. Now, another advantage of an SPV is that your age and your income generally is not an issue. Plus, you have the flexibility of being able to transfer shares to others, whether it's family members, children or whoever, incrementally. Talking of shares, don't get carried away. And you, when if you register a company yourself, you can select how many shares. It's normally a standard 100 non paid up shares. Um, some people get carried away and register 100,000 or something like that. But the shares, for example, have a nominal value of a pound. And on your death, if, if you have created far too many shares, then that can cause problems because technically they should be paid up. So just stick with just the 100 shares. That's normally OK. And as I said, the flexibility of an SPV allows you to just transfer those shares incrementally. But once again, do not transfer anything to anyone until you get advice to do it in the most tax efficient manner, because Mr. Taxman is very, very clever and he can come at you in ways that you would not believe. Um, now, when a property is held in an SPV, the other advantages are that firstly, the properties are ring fenced. That means that each property is held in a separate SPV independently of any others that you may buy. And whatever happens to one doesn't affect the other. Now, it's not just about um, any problems with, with your mortgage or anything like that, which hopefully even now you won't have. But more importantly, it is the fact that lenders conduct something called a stress test. And the stress test is that whatever the rate that they will offer you a mortgage, they want to, they test 
the rent that they believe that will, they will get, they value it, and that rent has to cover interest at a certain percentage higher than the interest rate where you are. If you own all the properties on your own name and one of those properties slips below their threshold, it could affect your ability to buy any more properties or remortgage the properties that you have to secure yourself a better deal. So it's very important. Although they do sometimes conduct a stress test wanting to know all the properties that you are connected with in SPVs, should one fall below the stress test level, it's normally a little easier to overcome than if it's under your own name. Um, obviously, you with um, SPVs, once you actually get going, you can raise finance with directors' loans. Again, don't do anything unless you've had advice from an accountant. Selling a property that's held in an SPV is much easier because you're not selling a property. You're basically transferring or selling shares in a privately held company. So investors are much more keen because buying the shares from a company won't incur any stamp duty. Not at the moment, but who knows how that may change in the future. It's also easier to move property held in an SPV into a trust. But again, I can't stress how important it is to get advice before you do anything like that because moving anything, any asset into a trust is the only way that you can actually have to pay inheritance tax before you die. Um, however, it is just at the user-friendly rate of 20%. So I don't know how that all works. So I can't advise you on that. I can't actually advise you on anything. I can only, um, I can only point out uh, some information to you, but um, definitely get advice so that you get it done correctly. And last but not least, as I said, start off with a clear strategy, the clear information and start as you mean to go on. Have clear decisions made about moving properties into trusts or anywhere else, because if you are going to move them into a trust, then it is better that it is done sooner rather than later because you don't want to be moving it after the property has risen in value and there is any element of any element of uh, capital gains or equity too much equity etc so the sooner you move it and get everything set up the better i hope that helps um i've got um, another video coming up about the stamp duty surcharge for second properties and i will see you next time